It's the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, May 30th. I'm James Spann. We're in between systems today, but another active round of storms likely before this week is over. We'll check some of the sky cam shots around the network at the somewhat insane hour of 5 o'clock. And hey, hey, look at that. We're getting daylight now. You know, for about the next uh, eight weeks, we'll have some daylight at 5 o'clock as we approach the summer solstice. That's the Trustville Sky Cam. Sky's mostly clear. A little bit of fog on the Sky Cam at the campus of the University of Montevallo down in Shelby County. And look at downtown Fayette. And again, some evidence of the sun about to come up. We're in between systems today. Off to the east, you've got Barrel over South Carolina. And off to the west, you've got that uh, wave that produced an MCS last night. Uh, you can see still some very active storms in progress over North Texas at 508. Uh, pretty nasty looking storm up there uh, near uh, Plano, Texas, north of Dallas, and also uh, one over parts of Parker and Wise counties northwest of Fort Worth where there's a severe thunderstorm warning. But that's where the action is going to be today uh, over the southern plains in North Texas. A moderate risk of severe weather. Uh, for much of Oklahoma and extreme North Texas and the slight risks surrounding that. The tornado probabilities are at 10% out there, and that's pretty significant. Obviously, there will be a storm chaser delight out there today. But hail is the main threat. This is the hail probabilities out there, and you can see it's at, we've got that 45% circle out there. So it'll be a very active weather day for our friends there. But again, around here, we're thinking the uh, day should be mostly dry. Now, tomorrow... We are under a slight risk, the standard slight risk of severe weather, and that includes basically the northern half of Alabama. And it's mainly for tomorrow night. I think the day will be mostly dry. And all of a sudden now, we have an enhancement, a 30% severe weather possibility over parts of north and northwest Alabama. And we're thinking the main threat would be from hail and strong winds. We'll take a look at the modeling here in just a moment. Then on day three, which is Friday, the risk is off to the east, uh, Georgia up to Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, but on the positive side, we'll take that rain. We had some uh, illegal, unexpected late-night storms last night that produced some decent rain for a few spots. Didn't rain everywhere last night. But over the next five days, valid through the weekend through Sunday evening at 7, this is showing rain amounts of about one inch. And clearly some spots could see more, and we'll take whatever we can get. And there's a look at uh, Barrel this morning, the tropical storm. You can see that thing is about to come back out over the water. Heavy rain falling over uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, wrapping up toward uh, Fayetteville, back over to Florence, South Carolina. And again, this thing's on the way out to sea, so no impact here. We'll check the OZGFS. This is valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon at 500 millibars. And you can see that next uh, bit of energy to the northwest of us, and that'll be carving out a trough over the central U.S. over the next 36 hours. And down below that, again, you can see how we're in between everything today. Uh, barrel to the east, active convection to the west, but uh, just kind of hot and dry with low 90s. All right, tomorrow the trough is developing. Down below that, uh, convection fires during the day west of the state. But again, I really think a pretty good chunk of the day tomorrow will be dry. Uh, the storms arrive tomorrow night, and then Friday, the trough is going negative tilt. But really, on this run of the GFS, and really the last couple of runs, it's got the better dynamic support a little north of here. And down below that, the surface low is pretty far north, 1,000 millibars up there around Detroit with uh, the, the front. We're just kind of catching the trailing edge of this. So uh, it would certainly lessen any tornado threat. In fact, there's the projected significant tornado parameter or the STP and uh, the numbers are all below one here and this is valid at nine o'clock tomorrow night uh, there's a couple of spots that do exceed one over Tennessee and points north but again uh, we just don't figure the tornado threat is very high and there's the Craven Brooks severe weather parameter derived by our pals Jeff Craven and Harold Brooks several years ago, and uh, those numbers are pretty robust, not, not overwhelming. And again, this is valid tomorrow evening at 9 o'clock. So I would say the better chance of severe weather about 6 o'clock tomorrow evening until noon on Friday, um, probably an overnight show. And the nocturnal jet often increases hail and strong winds, yes. 
pretty good chance of that, but the tornado threat looks low at this point, and the rain will be ending during the day Friday from west to east. Rain should be gone by Friday night, so that's the deal. And then Saturday looks great. Beautiful day to start the weekend. Low humidity. Start the day in the 50s. Hey, the GFS is printing 55. That'll feel good. The high only at 82. Low humidity. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. But Sunday, uh, the, the humidity creeps back up. Uh, the high should be in the upper 80s. And even evidence of maybe a shower over far north Alabama Sunday afternoon now. We'll watch for trends. For now, we've not mentioned any chance of rain. Monday of next week, moisture comes back. That's kind of typical summer stuff. Maybe a shower or storm in spots. Uh, the GFS is showing 89. There's Tuesday. You'd mentioned widely scattered storms. And look at Wednesday all of a sudden. Now we've got this big trough carving out over the east, and the GFS wants to develop a surface low over Georgia with some increased opportunity of showers and, and highs drop accordingly. But this is kind of a newer thing we've seen. We'll, we'll watch for model trends. We'll check the end of the forecast on the 14th of June. And hey, look at that big upper low over us. And if that's right, it would be cooler than average and kind of wet and unsettled. But don't take that to the bank. Wouldn't be shocked if that goes away in future runs. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 3.30 or so today. And don't forget to watch us on uh, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 on the live stream or the television side. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.